Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Use the link in the description for 10% off of your first website or domain. Let's take a look at one of my favorite easy to use video editing programs, Adobe Rush. What's up? This is John from John Brands for Photography. And as you already know, I absolutely love using my iPad Pro for editing, laptop replacement, and any type of creative work. If you're not familiar with it, definitely check out the link up above where I use my iPad for editing photos, editing videos, and just all sorts of other things. Definitely, definitely check it out. Today, I actually wanted to show you all one of my favorite easy to use programs, which is Adobe Rush. If you're not familiar with Adobe Rush, it's basically the little sibling of Adobe Premiere. Obviously, made by Adobe, it's a great program that you can use on your desktop, your iPad, and even your iPhone. So making IGTV videos, videos for YouTube, or even just quick stories for Instagram are great in this program. I recommend it to anybody who's just starting out with video editing and they're not very familiar with it. If you already have a Creative Cloud account, then you also already have Adobe Rush. So make sure to download it and check it out. And if not, you can hop on the App Store and sign up for one of their plans. I believe it's $9.99 a month. So let's go ahead and talk about the gear I'm gonna be using today with Adobe Rush. Obviously, I have an iPad. I'm rocking the 2018 iPad Pro 11 inch. I absolutely love this size, and I think it's the best size for anyone to use. The bigger one is nice, but at that point, in my opinion, you may as well just get a laptop. If you want something portable and a tablet, the 11 inch is the way to go. I have a 256 gig one, and I find it good enough for most footage. However, if you're working with a lot of 4K footage like myself, you may wanna go up to the 512 or one terabyte version. For editing, I'm gonna be using the Magic Keyboard. The Magic Keyboard is hands down the best way to use your iPad Pro. Most apps actually have key commands as well, so it gives you a full laptop feel. So definitely, definitely use some type of keyboard with your iPad while editing. I also have the Apple Pencil. I don't know how much I'm actually gonna be using it, but I always love to have this on hand to kind of nitpick and get inside the app with precision. And last but not least, I'm gonna be using the Narbox CF card reader. That's basically gonna give me a CF card reader, SD card reader, and micro SD card reader, all able to go right into my iPad Pro because it is USB-C. So that's definitely, definitely something you should check out. If you're not familiar with that card, check out the link in the description. It's a really cool card reader. So let's go ahead and start out with importing your content. So I'm gonna take my Narbox CF card reader. It comes with a little USB cable. So I'm gonna hook that to my iPad Pro. And I've already loaded in the content I needed, but I wanna show you all how this thing works. So I have a micro SD card here that I was using in my Mavic Air 2. So I'm just gonna pop that in there. And we can go right into our files. And you should see your card here. Mine's called Untitled and then I can see all of the content right on it. So you'll see I have videos on there as well as photos. I can open that up, take a look at the videos, just watch them from there. And then what I would do is select anything that you wanna actually import and use in Adobe Rush and go ahead and move that stuff onto your iPad. So for example, I can take this video here, click the three dots and I'm gonna move. And then I have a folder here called videos and I can copy it over. So I'm essentially copying it from my SD card onto the iPad Pro. There we go. Once you've done that, you can go ahead and jump into Adobe Rush. So let's go ahead and do it. Now keep in mind that Adobe Rush is basically a very watered down app comparative to Premiere Pro. It's gonna give you the basics of what you need to edit video, and yet again, if you're starting out with video, this is the way to go. It has everything you need and not a lot of extra bloat to confuse you with anything. So I'm in Rush now, you see I have a couple of videos I've already worked on in the past, and what I wanna do is start a new project. So I'm gonna hit this plus, click Add Media, and we want to go to files because that's where I imported stuff from my SD card. At the bottom here, I can name my project. 
So I'm going to call this my mobile gear. And then I'm going to import from files. And here is all the footage that I recorded. So let's select, select all, and open. Here are all my clips. So when you add them to Adobe Rush, it is going to automatically put it in your timeline. But you can go ahead and delete that stuff out of the timeline and start working with it. So let's hit create. And there is all my content right inside of Adobe Rush ready to go. So a lot of this stuff is B-roll. And then you have my main footage here. So I know the main footage I'm going to need right on the timeline. And everything else for now I'm going to get rid of. You can see I can use my trackpad to zoom in and out and also scroll. So yet again, the magic keyboard is super awesome with Adobe Rush. So I'm just going to go through each clip. You see how it's highlit orange. That's how I know where it is. And I'm just hitting delete on my keyboard to get rid of everything. So I've been eyeing drones for a long time. And as you know, as a photographer, taking aerial shots. So here we are, my main footage. So typically when I'm editing my videos, I actually edit by using the audio. So I'm gonna go through my video now and kind of speed it up in and out while I edit and talk about different sections of how and why I'm editing it. To start out, I'm gonna be scrolling through and listening to the video. Any mistakes I make, I'm gonna cut them out. I like a very jump cut style of editing where I'll even jump cut where there's not a mistake. That way I can take a breather and stop and just have jump cuts throughout the whole video so mistakes and or pauses all look the same. So it makes it harder for you all to tell when I'm making mistakes and stuff, but this is gonna be a good look into how I record my videos. This was just a quick little video I did, nothing real serious. I was talking about a couple of my photo gear that I like to use. Honestly, I don't know if I'll actually share this video or not. Maybe it'll be on Patreon or something, but let's go ahead and start running through editing this. So I can scroll, spacebar, John plays, and stops. S gives me cuts, and I can do command Z for undo. You can do command copy, command pay, all that stuff is the same. And if you wanna know your key commands, you can just hold down the command button, and it'll show you everything right up on screen. What's up? This is John from John Brands for Photography. And What's up? This is John from John Brands for Photography, and I wanted to share with you all some of my favorite travel tech. So, here we go. That mistake at the beginning. I can use my arrow keys to move by frame. Get it where I want to, hit S and cut it, and then delete the other section. I also stopped here and took a pause. But you know what, I'm actually getting ahead of myself. Before I start editing, you wanna make sure your clip actually is working the way you want it to, and that's where this stuff on the right side comes in. These are all your editing tools, so let's go ahead and look at those real quick. While you're highlight on a clip, you have your text options, transitions, any color stuff, so you can color correct just a bit. Your speed options, so you can slow down and speed up clips. Your audio options, which I actually, I'm going to take it. Yep, it's not on auto volume. I do want to do some reduced background noise, and I found it works better very low, so like around 4 to 5. You don't want to turn this up too much. You'll get weird artifacting in your audio. And then last but not least is your sizing. You can flip it, change it, scroll it up larger, zoom in on it, and all of that stuff. So I went ahead and made sure my audio was looking good. And now I can continue to edit stuff. And then here's that next clip where it starts. So I'm gonna cut that and take out here. So there's my first jump cut. So let's watch that. This is John from John Best for Photography. And I wanted to share with you all some of my favorite travel tech. Now I know we can't really travel. So that was a little too quick on the edit there. 
I was just a little too close. I like to have a little bit of breathing room so that the cuts don't feel too fast. This is John from John Press for Photography, and I wanted to share with you all some of my favorite travel tech. Now I know we can't really travel right now, which is very sad. Now I know we can Yep, so there's a mistake, so I did it a couple more times. Obviously we can't travel right now. I think this was the take that I want. Obviously we can't travel right now, which is the absolute worst. But I wanted to share some of this tech with you all to let you see what I like to take with me when I go anywhere doing weddings or just traveling in general. Cut that. This is probably a mistake. And hopefully we'll be able to get... And hopefully we'll be able to actually travel sometime soon. So there is another cut. Also, this video was made specifically So I'm going to keep going through, keep editing, get all these cuts in and we'll start talking about adding your B-roll and music and all of that other stuff as well. Also, this video was made to be edited in Adobe Rush and I have a video which you can check out right up here of how I put together this whole video using my iPad Pro only. Definitely make sure to while editing my videos, I basically go through, watch a section until I make a mistake or take a pause, and then use S to make a cut and take out that pause or mistake area. Make sure that while you're recording, you pace yourself. Don't talk too much, don't talk too quickly. And when you finish an idea, stop for a moment so you can collect yourself and also make that cut and have a very openly jump cut style. This took me about 10 minutes or so to actually edit all of my main footage. So it's not too hard editing talking head or A-roll footage as we like to call it. This video I'm working with is 1080p. However, Adobe Rush and your iPad Pro can definitely handle 4K footage. I've used a bunch in the past and it works extremely well. I'm always surprised at how smoothly the iPad Pro can keep up with 4K footage. It really just depends on how much space you have on your iPad. As you know, 4K footage takes up a lot of space. All right, so we've gone ahead and edited all of our A-roll. Now let's start adding in some other stuff like music and or B-roll. So on the left side here is where I can add more content or get to all of the videos I already loaded inside of my session. I also can open up tracks. I can detach the audio. There's a lot of different things that I can do inside of this to give it more of a full look for video editing. So for now, I'm gonna keep my tracks and I have all my footage here. And this footage was kind of bad. <laughs> so I was using the X-T4 and trying to see how much the IBIS can handle doing B-roll handheld. And it's not the greatest, but you know what? We're gonna work with it. We're gonna see how it goes. So let's find out a spot where I'm talking about And hopefully something. we'll be able to actually travel sometime soon. Also this, video, also, this video was made to be edited in Adobe Rush. Make sure to check it out. And this video is going to be nice, short, and sweet. Favorite tech. Starting out with my newest toy, the Mavic Air 2. So I've been eyeing drones for a long time. And and then I can go find where I have some Mavic Air footage like this and plop that in here. I want to move it up. Too. So I've been eyeing. We're going to take the audio and turn it all the way down. So I've been eyeing drones for a long time, and as you know, as a photographer, taking aerial shots is really awesome. You get a new perspective on things that you typically can't get. So I've been eyeing So Adobe Rush doesn't have any stabilization, so that's one thing you have to keep in mind for the footage you're using in here. But yet again, if you're trying to do something nice and quick and short, 
this is gonna be awesome. I'm gonna take this clip, I'm gonna plop it over here, and I'm gonna go to my timing, and let's actually slow it down a little bit and see how it looks. But let's go ahead and get into some of my favorite tech. Starting out with my newest toy, the Mavic Air 2. So I've been eyeing drones for a long time, And as you know, as a photographer, taking aerial shots is really awesome. You get a new perspective on things that you typically can't get. So I've been eyeing a drone for a long time. But because I knew I wasn't going to be using a drone for a lot of my wedding photography, I never really invested in one. But when the Mavic Air 2 dropped at that price of about 800 bucks, I just, it was too good to pass up. Being able to shoot 48 megapixel in RAW and also 4K60. Cool. So let's go ahead and keep adding some more B-roll. And I kinda, I feel like I wanna lay that one over. Out with my newest toy. Like right here, the Mavic Air 2. So I've been eyeing drones for a long time with my newest toy the Mavic Air 2 so I've been eyeing drones for a long time and as you know as a photographer taking aerial shots is really awesome you get a new perspective on things that you typically can't get so I've been eyeing but when the Mavic Air 2 8 megapixel in raw Actually, it looks like I have some more footage here. So we drop that in there. And again, we want to turn down the audio. At two weddings and just while I'm traveling, maybe out on the beach or in the mountains or something of that sort. Also, it's like super small. So or in the mountains or something of that sort. Also, it's like super small, so it's easy to pack, and it goes along well with the way that I'm carrying most of my stuff. Maybe slow this clip down a little bit as well. the beach or in the mountains or something of that sort also it's like super small so it's easy to pack and it goes along well with the way that I'm carrying most of my stuff pull this back a little bit which you can check out in my what's in my bag video right up above the next piece of some of my travel gear is the Narbox here's our Narbox mention so let's go find that footage which, here it is. I'm gonna drag this in some. Gear is the Narbox. So obviously as a photographer and... And let's get rid of our audio. I'll also slow it down. And so basically, as you see, it's a very general process, but the fact that I'm able to do this on my iPad is super, super awesome. So you can have up to four tracks, which is awesome. You can have your text, multiple video tracks, and then also some audio as well, which yet again, you can add your audio any type of way. You can download it online. You can download it into files so that you have that stuff as well, which I think I have some audio. So let's go ahead and look at that real quick. So I'm going to hit this plus, and then I'm going to add some media. We're going to go back to files again, import from files, and I'm pretty sure I have a folder specifically for audio and or, it's probably just in my downloads. Let's see if I have any music here. I do. 
I'm going to grab a track. I don't even know what it is. But there we are. I'm going to throw that in there. So Adobe Rush has automatic ducking built into it. But a lot of times I like to do the ducking myself. Or you can just make your audio whatever level you want it to underneath your voice. So again, I go back to my audio section. And let's turn the clip volume down. And yeah, let's let's try out some auto ducking reduced by let's say a 40%. that two weddings and just while I'm traveling, maybe out on the beach or in the mountains or something of that sort. Also, it's like super small, so it's easy to pack and it goes along well with the way that I'm carrying most of my stuff, which you can check out in my what's in my bag video right up above. The next piece of some of my travel gear is the Narbox. So obviously as a photographer and content creator, if I have all my cameras with me, I have my drone, I'm taking so as you see, we have our audio underneath everything as well. So we've taken a look at editing your clips, using S to split clips, using delete on the keyboard to be able to delete the stuff, adding some B-roll in multiple layers of video, slowing it down, speeding it up, all types of stuff. So let's go ahead and talk about the last section, which is exporting your videos. So when you're done with your video and you're ready to export it, you'll wanna go up to share in the top left corner. You have a section here that shows your quality settings and usually automatic is going to be best. It's going to take whatever your video settings are. So if I had a 4K video, it's going to export it 4K. Like you see with this video, it's a 1080p, so it's going to export 1080p. But you also have some different options here and you can change it. You can make it better for YouTube, so on and so forth. You hit export and it's going to render out your video. And once that's done, they don't actually ask you if you want to share it somewhere specific, like Instagram, YouTube, to your files app, send it to someone over Messenger, just all kinds of different things. If you're like me and you're looking for a place to share your content, like your video and your photos, in a professional manner, definitely make sure to check out this video sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is an online, all-in-one platform, which is the perfect place to display your portfolio and work. I've been using it for six plus years now for my wedding photography and I absolutely love it. It's great to show off all my different weddings to my potential clients and you can also put videos on there as well. You can see I can easily show a video from a wedding as well as all the photos in one clean space. Not only is it great for portfolios, but if you're also looking to sell anything, they have commerce, you can easily quickly sell physical and digital products. You can handle all your shipping and your discounts for those products, and it's absolutely amazing to use. Keep track of all of your analytics as well right there on Squarespace so you can see how many people are visiting your site and buying products and how much you're making, which is probably the most important part. Make sure to check out the link in the description below for 10% off of your website or domain. So now that everything's exported, I can share it to multiple places, and I've edited a whole video on my iPad. I'm probably going to upload the video that I was editing here on my iPad onto YouTube at some point. So keep an eye out for that. If you haven't seen it, maybe I'll link it up here or something. And again, make sure to check out this video sponsor, Squarespace. These long form videos would not be possible without them. And honestly, if you're using a website at all, it is definitely, definitely the way to go. I've gotten so much business just from a nice looking website and Squarespace makes it extremely easy to use. If you all have any questions about Adobe Rush, please let me know, leave them in the comments below. I'm happy to answer all your questions. And don't forget to hit that like and subscribe for more videos on using your iPad, iPad apps, and creative entrepreneurship. I'll check you all out next time. All right, peace.